The next thing we'll review on the MRI scans is a meniscal root tear. Now, the meniscal roots are the attachment sites to bone of the meniscus, and they're important because if they're detached, they can make a meniscus totally unstable. There's been studies from Pittsburgh that have shown that a complete detachment of the meniscus is equivalent to a subtotal meniscectomy. So it's important to identify these tears and make sure we repair them when we can. It's an important new subject because root tears have only been recognized in the last five to six years. So it's something we're doing a lot of research and trying to improve the treatment of patients to try to prevent problems. So the MRIs that we'll go through will identify some of the problems that can happen with patients with meniscal root tears and we'll show the different types of ways to assess a meniscal root tear on an MRI scan. The first MRI sequence that I'll go through is a coronal scan, and we'll go through the fat saturation sequence to best demonstrate what can happen when you have a meniscal root tear. So this is starting out on a right knee, and the white is the fluid that occurs, and this is a patient that came into clinic in a wheelchair. She'd been very active, she was doing some gardening work and squatted down and then noticed a pop in the back of her knee. And within a couple of weeks, she was unable to bear weight, so she came in in a wheelchair. So as we go posteriorly, we can see the normal bone appearance here of the distal aspect of the femur. And we can see the meniscus over here, the medial meniscus. And one of the first things we'll see is that the meniscus is not sitting centered under the femur and tibia. It's a little bit out of the joint, which we call extruded, and that's one of the first signs that we look for for a meniscal root tear. So you can see it's clearly extruded here, and as we start to go more posterior, we'll start to see some increased swelling within the bone. So what is happening here is there is an overload of the articular cartilage because the meniscus is not sitting within the joint, and this can lead to an insufficiency fracture in the past, this used to be called spontaneous osteonecrosis of the knee, or, or sonk or sponk, or different ways to call it. But you can see that there's a developing fracture right through here because of the overload. And you can contrast it to the opposite side of the knee, where the lateral meniscus is sitting well-centered, and you can see that the bone looks normal. It doesn't have all the swelling like it does in the medial femoral condyle. Now, as we start to go more posterior, the meniscus still looks extruded. And as we go to the midline, we'll see that this looks a little bit squared off. So instead of having the normal attachment on the tibia along here, there's a detachment, and this is consistent with the appearance of a meniscal root tear. Now the next image we'll go through is the sagittal image. The sagittal image, so this is starting on the medial side of the knee. And we can start to see some of the hamstring tendons coming down here and the swelling in the back of the knee. So this is a Baker's cyst. A baker cyst would form between the direct arm of the semimembranosus and the medial head of the gastrocnemius. So as we come down along the semimembranosus and the gastroc, you can see this little uh, entry site right here where the fluid will, will go out the back of the knee in the form of baker cyst. So here's the meniscus that we're looking for. We're starting to see some ins insufficiency and in edema within the medial femoral condyle, which is further accentuated right here. And then we'll start to get back we really can't see the meniscus attachment, so this is what we call a ghost sign where it looks a little bit wider and we just don't see the normal appearance of the meniscus at this location. Here's the PCL that looks normal. Here's the normal appearance of the ACL. And as we get to the outside of the knee, we'll start to see that the bone looks normal and the lateral meniscus also looks normal as we course to the far lateral aspect. The final image that we'll look at for this root tear is looking at the axial image. So the axial image gives us the best means to be able to assess a meniscal root tear. So we're starting up high here, just above the patella. We can see some swelling within the joint, which is what we call an effusion, and we'll start to course down towards the joint line. So you can see there's a lot of swelling. Here it is leaking out the back of the knee and forming a Baker's cyst. And we can see the semimembranosus, the medial head of the gastroc. And then I want to get right to the joint line we can see the insufficiency reaction here on the medial femoral condyle. And as we get to the joint line, we can see that there's a disruption right here of the meniscus attachment site. So these can sometimes be the most effective way to look at a, a radial root or a complete root tear of the posterior or the medial meniscus. And you can see that it's, there's fluid within the attachment site right through here. So these three views we sometimes have to put together and use all of them with the coronal views allowing us to look for extrusion of the meniscus and also looking at the attachment site posteriorly. On the sagittal view, we'd look for a ghost sign. 
and then the axial view, we'd look for a disruption of the meniscal attachment site on the posterior aspect of the tibia. Now this is another example of a sagittal view trying to show the ghost sign a little bit more clearly. So this is another right knee where we're coursing over and here's the meniscus here. This is a much younger patient so you can see the substance looks entirely normal. There's a good dark signal intensity throughout the meniscus and as I go more to the midline we can start to see a little bit of evidence of some bone bruising back here and this is showing where the meniscus has been disrupted. So this is a better example showing where there's been a complete disruption where it should look like this dark triangular shaped signal intensity and as we get to the midline here it's very difficult to discern that there's actual attachment sites. So this is a, a better way of visualizing what a ghost sign looks like on the posterior aspect of the tibia when we do have a medial meniscus root tear.